Is the movie The Conjuring 2 haunted? Yes, we're finally getting to that story. And a conspiracy involving J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter books. And the oddest thing is, the conspiracy might actually be true. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you're having a great day too. I'm having a great day despite the fact that my apartment, as much as I love my apartment complex, the hallway lighting is not turned on. This place is known for being haunted, my apartment included. We'll do stories on that later. And I'm doing laundry. And I've been trading ghost stories with Lana all day day long all morning long well no pretty much all day long anyways i was talking to lana all day we were trading ghost stories on facebook and my clothes i got to get them out of the dryer and it's a dark hallway and it's spooky and it's raining up here so i've been drinking that rose energy serum i don't know how to classify it i got it at the free food bank the corner food bank in town i took that and some applesauce i ate the applesauce a long time ago Man, it really does work. It gives you a lot of energy. I feel myself talking very quickly, so it's like I almost have to like slow down and restrain myself. But I, I think we got a good episode today. I'm very excited about that. So, The Conjuring 2. Now, The Conjuring 2 was the sequel to The Conjuring 1. It was, obviously, but what it was really setting up was building The Conjuring Universe. The Conjuring Cinematic Universe actually may be the closest competitor to the Marvel Universe that we have. Because you have, like, Annabelle, you have the Conjuring movies, you have Annabelle, you have The Nun. Now, they're doing quite well. And James Wan is a completely underrated director. He came off of Saw movies. He's done these Conjuring movies. He's done Fast and Furious. He's doing Aquaman. Very underrated director overall. I really like his style. However, I didn't like The Conjuring. And I wrote a full review of it on my movie review website, Video Vandals which I'll put in link below. I wasn't a fan of it. So when I started doing this research, I started reading stuff that the movie The Conjuring 2 was actually haunted by demons. There were rituals in the movie of The Conjuring 2 that made people get possessed and brought demons into your house and movie theater and things like that. And I was like, okay, you know, again, take off my skeptic hat because that sounds completely foolish that a movie in such wide release could have something like that in it take off my skeptics hat and I'm doing my research and they're like a woman was possessed watching this movie and I was like okay you know looking at it the woman's like in the audience going and then it was debunked the video of her freak she really did freak out during a movie it was probably some sort of epileptic fit but it wasn't the conjuring 2 it actually happened years before the conjuring 2 came out so that story got debunked but people still passed it around and said there are real rituals used in this movie to bring demons out. Now, I will say this at this point. Before I prepped this story, I was like, "Well, I should watch The Conjuring 2." And it was okay, there is a cl- and I talked about this when I talked about the boo pill, how I think that a lot of girls are more into horror and paranormal than people think. The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2 and the Annabelle movies are what I call date They're basically date movies. They're either movies that girls go in groups together to watch, or you bring a girl to see it. Guys don't, you don't get, hey bro, what's happening this weekend? Oh yeah, dude, the nun's coming out. Hell yeah, let's go see. That's not who those movies are made for. The audience of that are women. Conjuring movies, Annabelle, they're all set up for that. They're perfect date movies, honestly. Because you know it's not going to be super gory like Saw. And it's going to scare her, which is going to turn her on. Perfect date movies. But I'm watching it alone in my apartment. And I was like, this movie is boring. It it wasn't, I didn't have a date with me. The storyline was, oh, there's a haunted house. And there's like an old man walking around the house. It had a lot of jump scares in it, which I'm not a huge fan of. I enjoy tension more. You can have both. So I didn't finish it. To be honest, I watched it and then I was like, I watched probably about half of it and I just wasn't feeling it. So even though I'm supposed to do the research for the show, I clicked it off and instead I watched The Row about a group of sorority girls being stalked by a serial killer who is chopping their body parts off and turning them into dolls. Starring the girl from Vanderplump Rules, I guess that's a reality show, and Randy Couture, the, uh... The fighter. I think he's a. I think he's a UFC guy. I don't think he's a wrestler. But anyways, I watched that instead. It, it it wasn't good either. The girls are hot. It was terrible though. Anyways, so I stopped watching The Conjuring to to watch The Row, and I ended up being disappointed on both counts. 
So story's over, right? You're like, Jason, you watched The Conjuring 2 or half of it. Half a demon didn't show up. The video of the woman being possessed in the movie theater was not true. It had really happened, but it had nothing to do with that movie. And it was most likely like an epileptic fit. So the movie's not cursed, right? This is where it gets weird. And I tried so hard, so hard to debunk this. And I'll tell you why, how these things work. Because this is an interesting little view on fake news. And because this is also kind of an interesting view on how fake news spreads. I'm not saying this is fake news, but you'll see the difference. So, The Conjuring 2 comes out. In India, there is a man named G. Ram Mohan. During the climax of the film, he's watching The Conjuring 2, he has a heart attack and dies. His buddy, H. Prasad, who said, hey, let's go see, you know, together, they're like, hey, let's go see The Conjuring 2. That's actually, that's actually weird, because it was two dudes seeing The Conjuring together, and I was just talking trash. I said, dudes, do not go see these movies together, so I could be wrong on that. I want to go see the movie with a bunch of dudes, and I don't know anyone, any other guy who would go see it with me. We'd go see, you know, Saw, or something like that. But anyways, are they still making those? I think they're done. So H. Prasad and G. Ram Mohan go to The Conjuring 2 to see it in this province in India. G. Ram Mohan has a heart attack and dies. And they take him to the hospital and they're like, you know, he's dead. And again, this could be a cultural thing, but the hospital staff said to his friend, H. Prasad, can you take him to the coroners? And H. Prasad goes, yeah, sure. He loads him up in what's known as an auto rickshaw. And they leave from the hospital to go to the coroners. Neither of them are ever seen again. Completely gone. Now, of course, it creates this vision of driving your friend's dead body is in the back of your auto rickshaw, which I imagine is kind of like a rickshaw with a motorcycle or a auto, like a motorbike attached to it. I guess I should have researched that before I started this. But you have your friend's dead body in the back of your rickshaw. You're driving through India. At night, the body reanimates. Glowing eyes attacks him. Auto rickshaw goes off the side of the road. I mean, that's obviously a fantastical interpretation of the events. But what we know is the people were never seen again. The friend, or the guy, or the auto rickshaw. Now, I read that story and I immediately go, I put back on my skeptic hat. And I was like, okay, that's foolish. And I started to see there was a ton of articles about this. They're all referring to each other, which you kind of see. And they were all clustered within a, a group of days. So you would have like, all of this stuff happened back in June 2016, so they'd all be days apart. It, it was an international story because it involved a hit movie. But you'd see the Daily Mail report it. You would see the New York Post did an article on it. You saw the Kalich Times, which is an Indian newspaper, do a story on it. And they're all grouped in this time period. So I go, okay, this happened back in June of 2016. Obviously, we have learned more information. No. To this day, there is not an article explaining where those people are. I go to Snopes. I'm like, obviously, Snopes must have debunked this. Nothing. Nothing at all. I typed in Conjuring 2, missing person debunked, nothing. No one's debunked this story that this happened. And I want to say this too. A lot of times when I'm reading stuff, generally it's on like the Daily Star. But here's a little hint as far as like fake news goes, especially involving paranormal events. They will not use names of people. They'll say an unidentified woman complained that aliens are sneaking into her house late at night. That's nine times out of ten totally false. Sometimes a person may want to, you know, be anonymous. But for the most part, that is a fake story. They don't use exact locations. Sometimes they'll say things like, in northwest England, you know, in southern France. So this article, like the College, College Times says, gives his name, gives where he was born, names the hospital that he was brought to. I can't pronounce it, but they name the hospital of where he was, where he was brought to. They talk about how the police are trying to locate the coroner office in the place where he grew up. It's very, very detailed. And 
as I was looking through the articles that were coming from other countries, it left out a lot of those details, and that's why I was super skeptical about it in the beginning. But when you look at the articles from that province, they're like, here's his name, here's where he was born, here's the exact hospital that this guy was brought to. So that allows people to then track that story back and they can call up the hospital and say hey i just want some clarification did this event happen did a guy have a heart attack and go to your hospital and then you tell them to leave if it's real the hospital can say yes if it's fake the hospital can say no but most stories involving the paranormal that are fake will just say a man in india died of a heart attack and his body went missing according to authorities he was taken to a hospital and then his friend loaded him up in his car and drove away Neither have been seen since. And for a lot of people who do paranormal stuff, read this stuff, that's enough. But when you, again, you put that, you put a little bit of weight on that story, it falls apart. This one has enough detail that I honestly think, I at least think the first part is true. A guy had a heart attack during The Conjuring. His friend took him to the hospital. I think, honestly, the second part's true. Now, whether they were beset by raiders or pirates, I don't know what area of India this looks like. I don't think there's like pirates roaming the jungles, or even if there's jungles. But it's very likely that these people did go missing, because this story has not been debunked, and it was a very high-profile story. It was covered in newspapers around the world. What happened to this body and the driver? Was the man killed by the conjuring too? Was it a normal heart attack and something normal happened to take them both off the roads and to disappear from the face of the earth? Was the man possessed by the rituals in the movie that I failed to finish? Who knows? That's a, it's a weird story. I think this one is true. I don't know if he was possessed by a demon or if his, him and his buddies possessed corpses are roaming the wilderness of India looking for more people for their undead army. That's unlikely. Very unlikely. But yeah, what happened to, this? What happened to these two guys? Weird. Weird stuff. The world is full of weird stuff. And again, the story just disappeared. You see all these articles within the course of the month of June, and then you see some later ones happen around you know, ha- Halloween, and then gone. But it is still, it's all, the story is less than two years old, so we may get more information coming up. There may be a 500,000 man army of the dead roving India when they start to cross into another country. Yeah, creepy. There's a billion people over there, so, I mean, you can miss two probably pretty easy, but, uh, yeah, creepy. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Okay, so we talked about this a couple episodes ago, how my birthday was kind of a bit of a bummer, but it got better. I went out with a couple friends that night, and then about two nights later, my friends Hank, Doris, and Wayne took me to the Trillium. If you're ever in Hood River, Trillium has great burgers. Stop by there. I prefer the Wrangler. I actually prefer them all. The uranium is very good as well. Anyway, so we're out, and there's one thing that I've noticed that when I'm talking to anyone considerably younger than myself, for whatever reason, two subjects always come up. Harry Potter and Firefly. I dislike them both. I think Firefly is completely overrated, and I think Harry Potter is lame. I've never read the book, never seen a movie. I will go over now very quickly everything I know about Harry Potter. Harry Potter gets touched by a dude on the forehead and gets a lightning bolt. His parents get killed. He ends up living in the closet with his uncle. An owl shows up, invites him to go to a school. He goes to the school. There he meets... A dwarf named Dobby and a gay wizard named Dumbledore. Then I know nothing that happens at all until Edward from Twilight gets killed during some sort of tournament and Dumbledore falls off a building. And then a guy named Voldemort, aka Tom Riddle, I know that for some reason, decides to fight Harry Potter. And they shoot magic at each other. And then Hermione turns black. The end. That's really all I know. I know stuff like, I know the names of the four schools, unfortunately. I know the names of the characters. I know, I mean, really, that's it. I know there's like something called a time turner, which is like, and there's stuff you can drink that turns you into the opposite gender. Very, very basic knowledge of Harry Potter. Now, You think, oh, that Hermione turns black thing, that was just some sort of flippant thing. But it's important to this conspiracy theory. This conspiracy theory started in 2005 by a Norwegian director named Nina Grunfeld. 
She was doing an interview for a Norwegian newspaper. And she claimed that J.K. Rowling did not write the Harry Potter books. She, She didn't write them. They were a manufactured series of books. This was her quote. But can a person be so productive and commercially successful in a media industry where nothing is left to coincidence? Is it possible that a person can write six thick books that are translated into 55 languages and sell more than 250 million copies in less than 10 years? Is it probable that the stories then get filmed and commercially exploited to a degree seen here without any well-thought-out strategy or highly professional players behind them? Is it possible that J.K. Rowling exists? Well, who do they think they're kidding? Not me. She thinks that J.K. Rowling is an actress that a basically a group of marketing executives hired a bunch of writers to crank these books out. They hired a face with a story. She's a young woman. She's a single mother. She's dirt poor. And she's sitting at the train station one day. The train is late. She comes up with the idea for Harry Potter. She ends up writing notes on little pieces of paper while she's sitting at cafes. She creates the first three chapters of the book, goes to the publisher, they buy it. It becomes the biggest book series of of all time. That's the official story. Nina's pushback on that is, and this was interesting, so the first part of that, you're like, well, you know, I guess it's possible to write seven books in 10 years, and it's just like every book's phenomenal, has this great marketing rollout, and so on and so forth. And the movies are super successful as well. Her pushback is Nancy Drew, the author of Nancy Drew, never existed. That was also a huge series. Each book was written by a group of writers. So they wrote the books, they just had one name, that was the series. So she goes, there is precedent for this as well. The Defense... They, you know, obviously when this, when Nina said this stuff, people started going, what? That's ridiculous. They talked to this Norwegian translator. He worked on translating Harry Potter books. He says that no, the books, this was their defense. The books were definitely written by one author because if you look at the books, he sees a consistent weakness in Rowling's work. And he goes, a group of writers could not have the same weaknesses when they write. So basically the defense is, She sucks, and a group of people can't suck in the same way as just Rowling sucks. Now, again, I haven't read the books. They don't really appeal to me. I'm not a fan of fantasy magic. But anyways, the defense, basically. And then the other defense is, that's ludicrous. No, she did write those books. But is there proof that she wrote those books? Well, I mean, you know, unless we go through and find the notes and all that stuff. And The story makes sense on one level that you could see... A marketing team say, hey, we we have this cool idea. We're just going to pay these young people to write these books. And J.K. Rowling will be this fictional character we created. However, th- the conspiracy theory didn't catch on. And Nina admits it's a conspiracy theory. She did, gave the interview in 2005. And that was it. It was just a little article in the back of a Norwegian newspaper that a couple other newspapers addressed as, look at how crazy this is. And that was it until 2011. You're T.R. Francis. You wrote the Angelica Button books. They're my favorite fantasy novels. Um, yes, it's me, the creator of your beloved magical world, full of whimsy and uh, chapters. Now off you go. Bye-bye now. But why are you working on a dinosaur show? And why did you run away from me? And how did Angelica get a new wand after Baron Morteth burned the Wandwood Forest? And look, you seem like a smart kid, so here's the truth. T.R. Francis isn't real. Of course you're real. Everybody knows you got the idea for this series after an explosion at a crumpet factory knocked you off a double-decker bus. How could that be made up? I'm just an actress they use for the jacket photo. That inspirational life story is pure fiction. Oh, I hate to break it to you, but all the books you kids love are conceived in executive boardrooms. The plots are based on market research, and the pages are churned out by a room full of pill-popping lit majors desperate for work. Publishers rake in the cash, and unsuspecting kids get 10 books a year by their favorite author. Everything I believed about young adult literature is a lie. (laughs) 
Now, in 2011, The Simpsons did an episode called The Book Job. Now, I am a, still a huge fan of The Simpsons, and anyone who says the show ended in Season 7 or Season 9 or whatever, you're not watching the new stuff, and it is still really good. The Book Job is one of my favorite episodes. This is Season 23. It's a good episode for two reasons. One, because it talks about the conspiracy theory that J.K. Rowling did not write the Harry Potter books. It's, it's obviously referencing her. So, in The Book Job... Homer, Principal Skinner, Bart, Moe, and um, one of the sisters, one of Marge's sisters, gets together and they decide to crank out fantasy novels because now they know that the whole thing is fake. It's just a group of writers writing one series of books and they have a face for the novel. And so it takes this conspiracy theory and turns it into the plot and the whole thing is set up. It's called the book job because it's set up like a heist. It's set up like a heist movie. They show them assembling the team and pulling off the con. It's actually, it's kind of like an Ocean's Eleven parody. It's a very, very funny episode. It's a very clever episode. And it talks about a conspiracy theory that up until that point was relegated to the back page of newspapers in Norway. It's one of those conspiracies that actually rings a little true. I first heard about the conspiracy theory. I worked backwards on this. I saw the Simpsons episode first and thought it was funny. And when you're watching it, you're thinking, that actually sounds fairly accurate. They, the whole episode is about the marketing teams that create these young adult novels. And they keep referencing this idea. And it almost feels, when you're watching it, you're like, that sounds so true. And, and James Fry, who wrote A Million Little Fibers, he was the guy who wrote that book that ended up being not true. He said it was a biography, not true. He started a company that would hire young writers who just are out of college, graduate school, to crank out novels. And I Am Number Four came from that workshop. It's not even a workshop, it's a job. You show up there, you, you write for eight hours a day, you go home. And it was just full of people. I am number four. So we have proof that young adult novels are cranked out by teams of people. Twilight was four books. They're fairly... I read more of the Twilight. I read three of the Twilight books and none of the Harry Potter. But if somebody told me, no, that was actually also a team of writers. Or Fifty Shades of Grey, after the first one, it was a team of writers. It wouldn't shock me. Because at a certain point, the publishing company has invested money into you. So they may not just have an editor work on your stuff. They may have another writer come and spruce it up. Harry Potter is a phenomenon. No other young adult novel has its own version of a theme park. None of them have the level of video games. It would not shock me if the allegations are true. J.K. Rowling has not responded to these things. And you could say, well, yeah, who's going to respond to every conspiracy theory? Obama released his birth certificate. J.K. Rowling hasn't responded to this stuff. Not after the initial allegation, not after the Simpsons episode that I've seen, that I've been able to see at least. Here's the thing. This is one of those conspiracy theories where if it's not true, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Now, let me go back, and this is where I think kind of the proof comes in. When I was saying about the what I know about Harry Potter, I said at the end, Hermione, is that Hermione, whatever, becomes black. And I think this ties into the conspiracy theory. So at, when they moved it to the play, they did a Broadway theater, It was Hermione was portrayed as a black actress. And J.K. Rowling was like, yes, I'm totally fine with this decision. You know, it's 2016, everything's great. But we let's look at some other stuff that happened. In the Harry Potter movies, I found all this stuff when I was researching it, there were two young black kids who later in the movies, when they got speaking lines, were replaced by white people. There was a young actress named... Not actress. There was a young character named Pansy Pinkerton or Pansy Parkinson's or whatever. She was played by a cute little young girl. And the rumor is, and there's a little bit of truth to this, J.K. Rowling hates that character so much, it reminded her of all the girls that picked on her in school, that she asked them to replace her with an ugly actress. Because she didn't want to see a cute girl being someone who reminded her of a bully. And they did. I don't think the girl that they replaced her with is ugly, but definitely not this cute little girl. You have... Dumbledore being gay, which J.K. Rowling was like, Dumbledore's gay. And now that they're doing the prequel movies, the director's like, eh, 
We're not really going to show that. And the fans are all upset. And J.K. Rowling's like, uh. You have Johnny Depp accused wife beater being in the prequel movies of Harry Potter, the Fantastic Beasts movies. And J.K. Rowling is a very big, like, proponent of, you know, women's rights. She's been brought to task for that. So from those little stories, I think you could say, and I think through J.K. Rowling's tweets and all that stuff, she's very social justice conscious. You know, racism and all that stuff, sexism is very in her consciousness. And yet she's supposed to also have tons of control over this franchise. And black people are being replaced by white people when they get speaking lines. That's ridiculous. Accused wife beaters are in movies that are based on her work that then she has to defend. She outs a character as being gay, but when someone else has control of it, they change that or they're not revealing that. If she and if she has all this power over this franchise, why can't she just say, no, I don't want these actors, I don't want these black kids to turn into white kids. That's racist. That's totally racist. You give the kids lines and they become white. So either she's this literary mastermind who's written the best-selling book series of the past hundred years. Or she's an actress who has no control and no say over what goes on in the stories. And you may go, well, Jason, Warner Brothers bought the movies. They can do whatever. And fair. That's fair. But it still doesn't jibe with the idea or the image that she has control over this franchise over the books or over the movies or some sort of input um el james who did 50 shades of gray she was allowed on the set of at least the first movie she went in with almost total control creative control and they she butted head with the directors and all that stuff and that was the first time they didn't even know if that movie was going to succeed J.K. Rowling apparently has all of this. She's this mega star. She has more money than the Queen of England personally. She has like $900 million. She has all these homes. She's constantly talking about these social justice causes, but when the rubber meets the road, they're gone. So it could be one of two things. She's a hypocrite, only in it for the money, or she is an actress who can say whatever she wants, but the real power, the marketing team, the writers behind the scenes, they're the ones who are like, oh, J.K. Rowling's talking about refugees again, but we're not changing this script. These black kids become white. You go, Jason, if that's true, why did Hermione become a black person in the play? I don't know, throw her a bone? But Hermione being portrayed by a black actress in the play was like, oh my God, look at how progressive we are but then there were two black kids who didn't have any lines and then they became white and they had lines that you can turn Hermione into a thousand people that's totally racist that is so racist I just found out about that tonight the whole, uh, okay anyways I'm getting off topic let's wrap this up I personally think it's very plausible that she didn't write those books I'm not saying it's true but I'm saying it's very plausible. I'm saying it's a conspiracy theory that... what What's the pushback on that? Oh, yes, she did. It's a conspiracy theory that makes sense. There's precedent for it before and other forms of the same genre. Recent precedents, we can never really prove that she wrote those books unless she, like, hands over handwritten notes and things like that. I, I think if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, we have proof J.K. Rowling didn't write these books, then it wouldn't shock me. I think it would shock a lot of people. And Nina, to, to go back to her, Nina said, the only way this thing will ever be exposed is if J.K. Rowling admits she didn't do it because she's tired of living her life and or the writers who wrote the book come out. And again, the defense is, well, if she's an actress, why does she have all this money? Well, she doesn't. It's all an act. Just like when you see rappers walk around with $500,000 of gold chains on their necks in front of the Lamborghini, it's rented. So those houses exist, and she has a pretty big bank account, but everything else is fake. You know, it's not like she owns five houses. The company owns five houses, and she's allowed to live in one and travel to the other and things like that to keep the story going. So that's it. You can research this one. You're not going to find a lot, unfortunately. But maybe some people will be able to provide us evidence one way or the other. 
you could all, you know, I keep saying if someone told me that she wrote these, then it had proof that she wrote these, I'd believe that too. But as it stands right now, if someone asked me to bet $100 that J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter books, I'd hesitate to take that bet. How could the publishers change our book? If they had been in charge of the Sistine Chapel, the whole thing would be vampires instead of the Pope's private naked dude mural. Look, we market tested the book, and it really got dinged on the whole trolls thing. I mean, dinged. So we made some changes. Don't feel bad. Before we got our hands on Twilight, it was about a girl who fell in love with a golem. But teenagers weren't going to spend their allowances to join Team Shmuel. But the trolls were the best part! Do the characters still say trolly instead of cool? No. Oh, that is so untrolly! DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can hit us at... Ugh. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at Jason O. Carpenter. I'm going to go and get my laundry in my dark hallway now. If I get attacked by a ghost, this episode won't get uploaded. If it's uploaded, I was not attacked. Maybe possessed, but not attacked. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Mm-hmm.